All right, so we talked about uh, the different types of bonds at this point, and we've talked about kind of why bonds form, but uh, we want to get into how to how to uh, write chemical bonds. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to figure out the oxidation number all right, of different elements. All right, so oxidation number is pretty simple. It's a, it's a positive or negative number that indicates how many electron atom has gained, lost, or shared in order to become stable. Right, has gained, lost, or shared to become stable. Right, it's not how many they have. That's an important distinction. It's not how many they have in their outer shell. It's how many they have to gain, lose, or share in order to become stable. So, for example, like sodium here, sodium right there, has one in its outer shell. If it can lose that one, it will now have a full outer shell. All right, let me get sodium up here for a second. So if this sodium atom can get rid of, so you can see it has two in the first, eight in the second. It's got one just hanging out right here. All right, if it can get rid of that one, it's not going to hold on to it very tightly because it actually wants to get rid of it. So it's not going to, it's called electron affinity. It doesn't want to hold on to it very tightly. So it actually will lose its electron very easily. So now it can have a full outer shell. It can have eight electrons in that outer shell. All right, so because it has one in its outer shell, basically what's going to happen is it will easily lose that one and then the sodium atom will become positively charged. All right, we'll have a little positive there. And you may say, well, why is it positive? It just lost something. Remember, it lost an electron. It lost a negative charge. When it loses a negative charge, it now has 11 protons, 11 positives, and only 10 negatives. All right, so that sodium will become positively charged. So its oxidation number, right, the oxidation number for sodium would be just a simple positive little plus sign, right? Right there. Oops. It's hard to write on this. A little plus sign. All right. And so I'm going to come back to this in a second. All right. So there's really two ways to figure out oxidation numbers. One, you can either just look at the group it's in and know that metals are going to lose electrons. Metals are on the far left of the periodic table. Metals are over here. And you know, I've already drawn this in the atomic. But your metals are going to lose electrons. And we're going to mainly focus on these groups right here, these two groups right there. All right. Those are going to lose electrons groups one and group two. So you can just think, well, I know from my last unit that the valence electrons, these all have one in their outer shell. These all have two in their outer shell. We skip this dip. These have three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. And so these have one and these have two. So I know that in order for it to have a full outer shell, just like sodium, if it can just lose that one, the next level's full. Well, for these, in group two, they've got two in their outer shell. Well, if they can lose those two, then that will be a full outer shell. So all they have to do is lose what they have in their outer shell. And same thing like so for I could think of oxygen. If I've got oxygen here, oxygen has six in its outer shell because it's in group 16. All right, remember, a full outer shell, that octet rule, it's eight. It's got to get to eight. All right, so I can think, oh, it's got six plus it needs two more, so it'll be eight. That's an easy way to do it. Just think of how many it has. I actually think there's a little bit better way to do that, which I'm going to go over in a minute, especially with those. So oxygen's oxidation number, since for calcium, well, let's go back to calcium. Calcium was in group two. If it could just lose those two electrons, it would become positively charged, all right, and that's, then it would have a full outer shell. If it became positive, had a positive two charge, it'd have a full outer shell. Oxygen oxygen, if it could just gain two electrons, it would have a full outer shell because a full outer shell is eight electrons. All right, so oxygen is in group 16, which means it has six in its outer shell, All right, which means it needs to gain two. Notice how I didn't write this. This is oftentimes what people do. That's why I don't like using this method because oftentimes I get this, uh, negative six. All right, no, do not write negative six. All right. it is, it's how many it needs to gain in order to have a full outer shell, not how many it has. All right. The easier way to do it, instead, that way you don't get mixed up doing six, is just count to the nearest noble gas. Remember, these are the, these elements up here are the noble gases. They, they, all the elements on the periodic table want to be like these noble gases. I don't know why I left out helium. All right. They all want to have a full outer shell. They all want to be just like those noble gases. They're like the cool kids of the periodic table. They're like the Mr. D of elements. All right? So it, if uh, you know, everybody wants to be like them, and so what they'll do is they'll... 
So they all want to be like them. So what I can do, like, so for example, if I want to find oxygen, say I wanted to be oxygen again, I'm oxygen here. I'm going to put my finger on oxygen, and I'm going to count. Well, if I want to be like neon, neon's the closest gas. How many spaces away am I? All right, so I put my finger on oxygen. I'm one, two spaces away. All right, so oxygen's oxidation number is two. All right, it has to be negative two. If we can gain two electrons. All right, same thing if I wanted to be, uh, let's say, nitrogen. I'll put my finger on nitrogen. Put my finger on nitrogen. I'm going to count to the nearest noble gas. One, two, three. Nitrogen. And once again, it has five in its outer shell. Nitrogen has five in its outer shell, but I'm not going to put five. I'm going to count it needs to gain three electrons in order to have a full outer shell. So nitrogen's oxidation number has to gain three charges. Now, I actually don't like it doing this way, but you could do it this way as well. Uh, like magnesium here. Magnesium is much closer to neon than it is to argon. It's six spaces away from argon, but if I go backwards, it's two spaces away from neon. So magnesium, you could use this method too. If magnesium, if it could lose two electrons going backwards, it would be, if it could lose two, it would be just like neon. It'd have ten in its outer shell. All right. But that's really all you're doing. Oops. That's all you're doing to figure out the oxidation number by using the noble gases. All right, so you're just going to go through and count to the nearest noble gas. Uh, if and I, I use that method with nonmetals, like huh, how far away am I? I'm three spaces away. There's my oxidation number. All right, because they all want to be have a full outer shell. And this is a little bit simplified, but that's all right. All right, and so now if I go back and I say, okay, well here I got fluorine now. All right, so fluorine. Let me get here. Let me see if I can erase this. Sometimes this stupid thing won't let me erase. And it will. All right. So I have fluorine here, right there. It is one space away from neon. All right. So therefore, its oxidation number, since it's one space away from having a full outer shell, remember it's not. It's not negative seven. It's not how many it has. It how many it needs in order to have a full outer shell. It just needs one electron to be like neon. Just needs one electron. Nitrogen we already did. Nitrogen is three spaces away from the nearest noble gas. Aluminum is a tricky one. I don't know if I'm going to give you guys an aluminum, but for this sake, I will. Uh, for, uh, it's five spaces away from the nearest noble gas to the right. It's going to be much more likely to count back this way. So if we go one, two, and three, it's much closer to neon than it is to argon. Uh, it's three spaces away from neon, five spaces away from argon. So it's actually, it's not going to be minus five. It's going to be positive three. Uh, and it's a metal anyway. Magnesium is in group two, so if it can just lose those two electrons, it's going to have a full outer shell. And oxygen, we already did as well. Oxygen is two spaces away from the nearest noble gas. All right. Oxygen is one, two. All right. And there's varying oxidation states and all that good stuff, but we're going to keep it pretty simple, and that's going to be what we're going to do to determine the oxidation number of elements. All right. And that's going to be crucial when we go to um, like writing ionic bonds especially. All right, so understanding how to get the oxidation number is what we want to focus on. All right.